Good morning, I welcome you to the session of IC Engineering Guest Turbine and today we will discuss on another uh, module that is the comparison between different cycles and actual cycles and of course their analysis. Now we have discussed about the auto and diesel cycle and today we will see that uh, there is another cycle which is largely used for modern engines and when we talk about new cycle of course we need to know what are the different processes uh, associated with that cycle and why you need to know rather why you need to discuss about that cycle. So, if we can recall that we have discussed about auto cycle. We have discussed about auto cycle, we have discussed about diesel cycle. Now the PV and TS diagram we have also you know uh, discussed, this is T S, this is P and V. And as you know that the movement of the piston is restricted between these two points. So, this is the intake, then we have isentropic compression and then for auto cycle we have constant volume heat addition, then we have isentropic expansion that is power stroke and finally, we have uh, blow down. So, this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4, this is 5 and the TS diagram we have seen that this is the TS diagram. So, this is 2, 3, Five and we have also discussed about the you know PV and TS diagram for the diesel cycle. So this is T, this is S, this is V, this is P, and for the diesel cycle we have seen that again. Of course, compression ratio will be high, but movement of piston will be restricted between these two locations. Now, we have constant pressure air intake, then of course, we have a compression, but the compression process is you know very uh, the I mean uh, I can say uh, because of the higher compression ratio, the compression process is such that the pressure and temperature at the end of the compression will be higher as compared to what we have seen for the auto cycle. Now, instead of having constant volume heat addition, we have a constant pressure heat addition and then finally, uh, there is isentropic expansion and then th this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, 4, 5. So, the, the are the different processes uh, which are you know executed to accomplish the cycle for I know CI engine and the corresponding TS diagram will be like this because 2 to 3 compression process is such that the temperature and pressure will be definitely higher than those which are obtained for the SI engine and finally, so this is 4, this is 5. Now, knowing the processes, we have mapped all those processes in PV and TS plane. From there, we have quantified the thermodynamic efficiency, thermal efficiency of auto and diesel cycles and, and we have discussed that the efficiency that we have calculated mathematically that is indicated thermal efficiency because heat is the transfer of heat is calculated for to and from the engine cylinder and for that if we can recall the eta thermal auto is equal to 1 minus 1 upon r to the power gamma minus 1, where r c is equal to 
भि टू बाई भि थ्री इज इक्वल टू भि बी डी सी बाई भि टी डी सी कम्प्रेशन रेशियो बट फर दि डिजल सैकेल इटा थार्मल डिजल इक्वल टू वन अपन वन बर सी टू दि पावर गामा माइनस वन एंड वन टर्म इज दिया दैट इज बीटा टू दि पावर गामा माइनस वन बै गामा इन टू बीटा माइनस वन दैट इज व्हाट वी हैव यू नो डिसकस स्टार्ट नाउ दिस क्वांटिटी दिस क्वांटिटी इज गामा इज सेफी बाई सेफी एंड दिस क्वांटिटी इज ऑलवेज गेटर देन वन नाउ सिंस दिस क्वांटिटी इज ऑलवेज गेटर देन वन सो फॉर द कंप्रेशन फॉर द गिवन कंप्रेशन रेशियो एफिशिएंसी ऑफ द एफिशिएंसी ऑफ फॉर द गिवन कंप्रेशन रेशियो एफिशिएंसी ऑफ द ऑटो साइकिल ऑफ कोर्स विल बी हायर देन द एफिशिएंसी ऑफ द डीजल साइकिल सो दैट इज व्हाट वी हैव डिस्कस इन द लास्ट लेक्चर नाउ सिंस द कंप्रेशन रेशियो इज फिक्स्ड सिंस द कंप्रेशन रेशियो इज फिक्स्ड वी कैन से दैट द कांस्टेंट वॉल्यूम combustion is more efficient than the constant pressure combustion now question is that uh, compression ratio i mean ci engines ci engines are operated with a higher compression ratio then efficiency will be higher for the ci engines so what we can see so from the last slide we can say that the constant volume combustion constant volume heat addition is more efficient as compared to the constant pressure combustion and efficiency of the auto cycle will be definitely higher than the efficiency of the diesel cycle now what you can say that the compression ratio if i fixed efficiency will be higher for the auto cycle but in general compression ignition engines are operated at a higher compression ratio so of course efficiency will be higher for the ci engine uh, compression ignition engines now from this we can say that if we somehow can have an engine where a part of the combustion will be at constant volume combustion and the remaining part will be at the constant pressure combustion why because that means from the from this discussion we can say that the constant volume combustion is more efficient so if i somehow can divide the entire combustion into two parts where one part will be the constant volume combustion we can achieve higher efficiency efficient combustion and since the compression ci engines are having higher compression ratio and higher compression ratio means higher will be efficiency so uh, and we have seen that the higher compression ratio you know engines the you know combustion is constant pressure combustion so we can have another part where the combustion will be at the constant pressure now in you know in modern modern ci engines in modern ci engines what is done uh, the normally what is done for the ci engines fuel is injected towards the end of the compression stroke such that as i said the entire you know spraying of the fuel fuel injection of the fuel will take some amount of time and there will be you know i mean for the con you know injection of the fuel we need some finite amount of time and within this time volume will be changed because piston will again come back from tdc towards bdc but we can approximate the pressure will remain constant so what is done as i said that we need to know that we need if we can have a part of the combustion which is at constant volume and remaining part will be as it is as if the pressure is remaining constant so why you are doing so because you have seen the constant volume combustion is the more efficient combustion so we can think that say if we now draw the schematic of the engine cylinder
and so that means uh, we have a fuel nozzle fuel is spread and this is intake manifold this is exhaust manifold so what is done fuel is injected rather fuel injection start when piston is uh, towards the late stage of the compression stroke rather very close to TDC. So, during the late stage of the compression stroke when piston is close to TDC fuel injection starts, but now we need to ensure that a part of the combustion will be at constant volume and remaining part will be as it is. So, the pressure will be constant and uh, we cannot con say that volume will remain constant. What is done? So, instead of injecting fuel and that is normally done in modern high speed CI engines, high speed CI engines that a part of the fuel, uh, a part of the fuel will be injected when piston. So, this location is TDC and this location is BDC. Now, the part of the fuel, rather I can say fuel injection will start when piston is slightly away from TDC, not very close to TDC say and that is 20 degree before TDC. So, 20 degree before TDC fuel injection starts, fuel injection starts and, and when piston reaches at TDC. So, the part of the fuel, so fuel injection starts when piston is 20 degree before TDC and the moment when piston reaches at TDC, the amount of fuel being injected will take part in the combustion and when the piston at TDC, so that part, the part which is the part of the fuel which was you know which is injected that part will take part in the combustion and we can say that piston is at TDC volume is remaining constant and at constant volume some combustion will be there and fuel injection will continue uh, for that particular cycle and the remaining part of the fuel that is uh, you know supplied even when piston is at TDC will take part in the entire combustion and entire combustion will be completed when piston is again traveling back from TDC towards BDC and that part we can approximate by constant pressure. So, that is the concept that means the fuel injection starts from uh, starts when piston is 20 degree before TDC. The time at which piston reaches at TDC the amount of fuel injected that during that time will take part in the combustion and we can assume that when piston is at TDC volume is remaining constant and the fuel you know injected during first half will now take part in the combustion and that combustion is constant volume because piston is at TDC and volume is remaining constant. But fuel injection will continue uh, that the amount of the amount of fuel that will be injected that depends upon that cycle that we will discuss that you know air fuel ratio. Now, the remaining part of the fuel when that will be injected again when I mean when the piston is at TDC combustion will be there, but still fuel injection will continue and the remaining part of the fuel will also take part in the combustion, but at that time piston will now travel back from TDC towards VDC and we can approximate that the volume instead of volume pressure will remain constant. So, that means we can approximate the entire combustion. can be splitted into two parts one is constant volume another is constant pressure right so that is what is done in most of the modern high speed ci engine essentially to increase the engine efficiency why because we have seen constant volume combustion for the given compression ratio even if we fix the compression ratio and that is towards the higher side say uh, above 15 for that constant volume combustion will be more efficient that is what we have seen by closely looking into the mathematical expression that we have derived in the last two lectures. Now also we need to ensure since this is you know high compression ratio engine. So, uh, we cannot say the entire combustion will be at the constant volume because the injection fuel injection will start some amount of time by that time piston will travel back from TDC towards the BDC. So, we have to approximate by constant pressure that means by ensuring by injecting rather by injecting fuel when piston is slightly away from TDC that is 20 degree before TDC 
we can ensure that the con combustion can be split into two different parts that is constant volume and constant pressure. Constant pressure is as it is that is of course uh, there, but we are ensuring that some part of the combustion will be at constant volume so that that combustion will be efficient and that will eventually increase the efficiency of the engine. So, this cycle is known as the dual cycle. So, the cycle the air standard cycle which is used to describe to analysis the uh, engine performance different processes for the modern high speed CI engines is known as the dual cycle. So, dual cycle means there are two dual I mean combustion there are dual combustion that means the combustion is split into two different parts. That means the air standard cycle air standard cycle which is used to analyze the I can say analyze the performance I performance of the engine of course modern high speed CI engines uh, and different processes involved with the involved with the engine operation involved with the engine operation. That means, we have understood why it is called dual cycle. So, this cycle is known as dual cycle. So, dual cycle is also an air standard cycle which is used to analyze the performance of the modern high speed CI engines and the different processes which are involved for the engine operation. And this is done essentially to increase the engine efficiency because we have seen that the constant volume combustion is higher I mean you know rather efficient than the constant pressure combustion. So, now if we try to look at the corresponding PV and TS diagram then uh, the PV diagram will be so dual cycle. And if we try to now look at the PV, and TS diagram. So, again compression ratio is fixed, but compression ratio is higher and the intake that is constant pressure intake that will be there. So, this is constant pressure intake. Now, compression will be there high compression ignition engine. So, compression will be isentropic compression and then there will be the entire combustion that is heat addition that is nothing but heat addition that is split into two parts. First part of the combustion will be at constant volume and the remaining part will be at constant pressure and then of course, we have a we will have the expansion stroke that is power stroke and that is of course, isentropic and finally, we will have blow down. So, this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4, 5, 6. So, this 3 to 4, so this is also and if we try to look at the corresponding TS diagram then it will be like this uh, 2 to 3 of course, we have isentropic process, isentropic compression, then 3 to 4 we will have heat addition. So, of course, T 3 will be higher than T 2 and again, so this is 2, 3, T 4 will be higher than T 3, but again 4 to 5 that is constant pressure combustion. So, again 5 will be higher. So, this will be 5. So, this is 4, this is 5 and then 5 to 6 and this will be the case. So, so, this is 4 and this is 6. So, I can write like this. So, 
So, this is 4 to 5 and 6 to 2. So, this these two are the you know PV and TS diagrams which is used to you know analyze the thermodynamic performance of the uh, I can say modern high speed CI engines and the cycle which is used rather the air standard cycle which is used to represent all these processes to used to analyze the thermodynamic performance is known as the dual cycle. So, in a similar way we have calculated, but one important thing is that 2 to 3 we know that is compression. isentropic 3 to 4 that is constant volume heat addition and 4 to 5 that is constant pressure heat addition. So, this is that is the entire combustion process. So, entire combustion is split into two parts and 5 to 6 that is expansion and 6 to 2 is constant volume blow down that is remaining same for all the cycles we have seen constant volume blow down that means we are approximating as if the volume is remaining constant, but before piston reaches at VDC the exhaust valve is allowed to open so that the gas pressure inside the cylinder will be reduced. And while the combustion gases are leaving from the engine cylinder the combustion gases will carry enthalpy uh, and the temperature will be reduced. So, this is constant volume heat rejection. and that is known as blow down and 2 to 1 that is constant pressure exhaust and 1 to 2 that is again constant pressure intake. And now, so one thing is that 3 to 4 constant volume heat addition. So, we can have say that is Cv into T4 minus T3. So, there will be Q in total, Q in total is equal to Q in 3 to 4 plus Q in 4 to 5. So, Q in 3 to 4 that is Cv into T4 minus T3 while Q in 4 to 5 that is Cp into T5 minus T4. So, uh, now if we try to analyze and ultimately Q in that is and Q out of course, Q out will be Cv into you know T6 minus T2. So, knowing this to knowing these quantities we can calculate what will be the thermal rather indicated thermal efficiency of the dual cycle and that of course, we will have a I will we need to uh, do a few uh, you know algebraic steps and we can uh, finally calculate. So, uh, the mathematical expression of this dual cycle I am not going to drive in this class rather uh, if you are interested you can you know uh, drive and you will get that the efficiency can be you know expressed in terms of uh, you know uh, uh, that is we have seen that uh, uh, compression ratio then uh, cut, uh, beta that is cut off ratio and also one thing is that this 3 to 4 that is this during this comp, you know combustion we have a rise in pressure. So, there is a change in pressure from P3 to P4 that you can see and during the second part of the combustion. So, this is first part of the combustion and second part of the combustion is constant pressure combustion or where we have a change in volume that is V5 by V4 that is the cut off ratio that we have uh, understood in the last lecture. And such change during the first part of the combustion that is uh, P4 by P3 that is also the change in uh, that is pressure ratio. So, now we need to know if we try to compare. So, we have discussed about auto cycle, we have discussed about diesel cycle, we have quantified through mathematical analysis the thermal efficiency, we have obtained the closed form expression of the thermal efficiency and 
Now we have discussed about the you know that is that is known as dual cycle. But for that we did in uh, you know uh, derive the mathematical expression. But again that can be done following the same step that we have done for the uh, uh, diesel cycle. Now uh, it would be nice if we try to compare the. I mean we have discussed about auto cycle. Then we have discussed about diesel cycle. And finally, we have discussed about dual cycle. So, now if we try to compare the thermodynamic efficiency of these three different cycles, I mean, okay, fine, auto cycle is used to, you know, uh, to compare the performance of the four stroke SI engines, diesel and dual, these two cycles are used to compare the four stroke CI engines. In particular, dual cycle is used to compare the thermo, you know, performance of the high speed modern four stroke diesel engine. So, now we will try to see the comparison between these three different cycles essentially to know the which cycle is having rather uh, I mean uh, which is having higher efficiency rather efficiency of which cycle will be higher and efficiency of which cycle will be lower. And But when you are trying to have comparison among these three different cycles, uh, we should have a common basis for the comparison. So, that means if we try to compare the performance of these three different cycles, we need to have a common basis for the comparison. So, comparison of these cycles and we need to have a common basis. common basis for comparison. That means, without looking into the mathematical expression that we have derived for the auto and diesel cycle, we also can express the mathematical expression of the therm thermodynamic efficiency that are indicated thermal efficiency of the diesel dual cycle. But without looking into those expressions, we can compare the efficiency of these three different cycles through the, uh, I mean from the PV diagram but for that we need to have a common basis for the comparison. So, because we need to compare if we you know if we have a common basis. So, as a common basis rather uh, we can com you can you know con consider uh, same compression ratio. So, that means we have seen that the thermodynamic efficiency or the indicated thermal efficiency of the dual of the auto diesel and also dual cycle can be represented in terms of the compression ratio. Now, if we fix the compression ratio and we will see that how we can compare without going into the mathematical details, mathematical expressions of these uh, three different cycles, but only by looking into the PV diagram. So, if we fix the compression ratio say uh, I can now uh, so, first number 1 is the compression ratio and number 2 we again can fix the uh, another common basis uh, we, rather we can fix another common basis that is the you know uh, same peak pressure. Now, if we go to you know discuss the first one that is the you know same compression ratio. Now, if I try to draw the PV because we need to draw the PV and TS diagram, you are not going to discuss the mathematical expression of this three different cycle. Instead, we are interested in to compare them from their PV and TS diagram. So, this is T, this is S. Now, compression ratio is same that is our common basis. So, if the compression ratio is same that means for all these three different cycle the movement of the piston is restricted between these two different between these two locations that is you know top dead center and the bottom dead center. So, this is V B D C and this is V T D C and we have seen that for all these you know three different cycles the you know process 1 to 2 that is same that is constant pressure uh, intake. Now, 
what we have seen for the auto cycle of course compression process will be there and compression process is the isentropic compression so this is uh, say this is the compression process so this is compression process so this is 3 and if we now consider the auto cycle then constant volume heat addition 3 to 4 and then again sorry this is 3 to 4 and finally we will have a we will have isentropic expansion we will have isentropic expansion and finally that is the blow down so this is the process so 2 1 2 3 4 5 that is the auto cycle and if we you know write uh, if we draw the corresponding ts diagram we will get like this Two two three, 2 3 that is 4 this is 5 this is 2 now so this is isentropic process now if we consider the diesel cycle that is the uh, cycle which is used to compare the efficiency of the compression ignition engines now in that case we have seen that but compression ratio is fixed so the piston movement will be restricted between these two location now the process 1 2 and 2 3 will remain same and 3 to 4 that com, you know that will be like this. So, now this is 4 prime and then 5 2 that is 1 2 3 4 prime and 5 that is the diesel cycle that is the diesel cycle. So, and if we try to now that means the temperature at 4 prime definitely will be less than the temperature at 4 because the pressure will be less. So, uh, maybe this will be the case. So, this is 4 prime. Now, that is the diesel cycle and today we have seen about the uh, today we have discussed about the uh, dual cycle that means a part of the combustion will be at constant volume and the remaining part will be at the constant pressure. So, what so if we try to superimpose the you know different processes for the dual cycle on the same PV diagram having the same compression ratio that means compression ratio is same. So, the piston movement will be restricted between these two points. So, the part of the combustion will be at the constant volume and the remaining part will be at the constant pressure. So, this is 3 prime and this is 4 double prime this is 4 double prime and the process will be uh, so 1 2 3 3 prime 4 double prime 5 that is the dual cycle and if we try to draw the corresponding processes on the ts plane then we will get 3 to 3 prime then 3 prime to 4 double prime. So, this is the 4. So, this is 4 double prime and this is 4. So, this will be the diagram. And the temperature at 4 double prime will be in between the temperature. So, T4 double prime will be less than T4 but higher than T4 prime. Now, we are going to look at the mathematical expressions, but from the TS diagram we know that the area under the process line in TS plane represents the heat transfer that we have learned from our undergraduate thermodynamics course. So, what we can see that the heat rejection that is the area under the process line 5 to 2. So, this heat rejection is remaining same for all the cases. So, Q out that will be nothing that will be nothing but the area under the process line 5 to 2 in the ts plane so that is same for all cases but q in that is again the area under the curve the area under the you know uh, process line uh, in the ts plane 
So, the QN of course, if we closely look at the corresponding TS diagram, we can see that QN is of course, different for different cycles. But what we know? We know the indic I mean any thermal efficiency that can be represented that is you know 1 minus q out divided by q in. So, if q in becomes that is heat addition becomes high q out is remaining same for all th three different cases. If we increase q in then efficiency will be higher. So, what we can see from the corresponding TS diagram that the q in auto will be greater than q in dual greater than q in diesel. So, that means we can say that the efficiency of the auto cycle will be greater than efficiency of the dual cycle will be greater than efficiency of the diesel cycle. So, this is the sequence of the you know uh, thermodynamic performance, thermal performance of three different cycles if we fix rather if we consider the same compression ratio. So, to summarize today's discussion that the when we try to compare the thermodynamic efficiency of three different cycles, if we fix rather if we consider the same compression ratio, then we can see without looking into the mathematical expressions of the thermodynamic efficiency the thermal efficiency just looking at the corresponding PV and TS diagram we can see we can say that the efficiency of the auto cycle is greater than the dual cycle is greater than the diesel cycle. So, this is the sequence and this uh, I mean this is obtained if we fix the same compression ratio. One thing that I would like to say over here uh, is that 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 uh, the compression ratio is not same for all the cases we have seen that the compression ignition engines are having higher compression ratio. So, the common basis that we have considered to have this you know conclusion is not the practical one rather we cannot consider that the compression ratio will be same for all the cases. Instead we can go for the second case that is if we can consider and that is most important design criterion that the peak pressure rise will be same for all three different cases whether the of course, the compression ratio will be changed, but the peak pressure will be same. So, that that is the most important design criteria and we can design the engine cylinder accordingly. Now, if we consider the same peak pressure ratio, then again what will be the sequence of the thermodynamic efficiency of these of these three different cycles that we will discuss without going into the mathematical expression details, but by looking into the PV and TS diagram and that part we will do in the next class. So, with this I stop my discussion today and we will continue in the next class. Thank you.